Hey guys, Tyrup here, and today I want to talk to you a bit about how infantry-based snares work, such as anti-tank grenades and Panzerfaust. So to start things off, we're going way back in time to the patch notes of June 2015, and this is where snares received some changes to be roughly how they are today. And we'll come down to the note here. So this is where they got changed so that they can no longer generate a critical to units above 75% health for mediums and heavies. So this kind of brought about the meta where now you require two anti-tank grenades to actually get a engine damage critical on a medium tank, which is a very common sight to see in most games. Also in the same patch, there are some other changes to criticals where that now criticals would not stop a vehicle from dying. I'm mentioning here, this change will prevent vehicles from cheating death at 0% health, which will be relevant later on. So my understanding of these snares back then is that they're basically identical across all factions. They do 100 damage guaranteed, and the only real difference is that in game the animations are slightly different. However, even back then I should have realized my thinking on this was incorrect because I do remember a couple of instances where a Panther took engine damage from two anti tank grenades, but then on other occasions from two anti tank grenades it didn't receive engine damage. And back then I thought, oh yeah, maybe it's a bug, maybe there's some error in the game, or maybe you have to get it below 75% health, so like 74% health to receive the critical 75% health exactly was incorrect. But that was wrong because here we have a 800 health T3485. Remember back then Panther used to have 800 health. So this is acting as a stand-in for the old Panther. I'm gonna fire off two Panzerfaust on it here. Should do 100 damage each. And that results in engine damage. So yeah, you only have to get it to 75% health. You don't have to get it any lower than that. But then later on I learned that different snares actually have different activation ranges. Here we have the Volksgrenadier's Panzerfaust, comes out to this point. Whereas the Grenadier's Panzerfaust comes out quite a bit further. Another long range snare is the Panzerfuse Lairs anti-tank grenade comes out to here as well. Whereas the Conscripts anti-tank grenade comes out to here. And this does make quite a lot of sense balance wise. You know, Grenadier is quite a squishy, low model squad. Need to have a slightly longer range on their snare to stay safe. Whereas the conscripts, you know, six man, highly durable, can oura at closer distance, makes sense that they have a shorter range on their snare. On top of that, different snares also have different cooldowns, so we'll do a quick demo here. Got the Eatonate here from the engineers. I think that was about 30 seconds. It's conscripts. It's again about 30 seconds, maybe it's 28. Hands of Faust for the Fox Grenadiers. 15 seconds. Then Panzerfaust for the Grenadiers. Also 15 seconds. So you can see there's a pretty big difference. Panzerfaust cooling down a lot faster than these allied anti-tank grenades. Though these kind of things can also change on some squads with veterancy. So that makes it a lot easier to chain Panzerfaust down a vehicle. You know, you can afford to stand range for that shorter cooldown. Whereas for the allies with the anti-tank grenades, you know, the extra 10, 12 seconds or so might just be a little bit too long for you to keep pace with the enemy vehicle. But then a bit over a month ago, I had a situation in a game where the opposing tank 100% should have died, and I just couldn't explain it. You know, the at nays didn't bug out, they didn't do a tiny bit of repairs that I didn't see, they didn't deflect a shot from a bazooka, leading to an unusual amount of health. I just couldn't explain why the enemy tank didn't die, and that caused me to do some digging. What I found was that that in-game bouncing animation wasn't just for show. If you fail to penetrate your snare, you'll do 80 damage, deflection damage, instead of the regular 100. And that's an important threshold because that means you can still bounce two snares and get engine damage on the regular 640 health mediums. So this kind of change is very hard to notice in everyday gameplay, whereas this explains why the Panther sometimes wouldn't get snared, because if you do 20 damage less, you don't meet that 75% health threshold. So here's a demonstration of the issue. We've got a full health Panzer IV here, which I'm going to demonstrate. You can see its health in this table over to the side. I'm going to shoot it three times with this T-34 here, get it down to 160 health, so I can try finish it off with anti-tank grenades. There we go, Panzer IV added exactly 160 health. We're going to fire off two AT nades here. Here goes one, doing 80 damage. As we know, that's a bounce of deflection. You know about that. Here comes the next. And there we go. That deflected, got the tank to zero health, and the tank did not die. Which is what happened to me in the game, which is what caused me to do all this digging. And for me, I just, I can't agree with that. A tank at zero health, in my opinion, 
should die. And it can get even worse than this. You can deflect again. And even at zero health, you can fail to kill it again. You can just continue to deflect anti-tank grenades and continue to fail to kill the enemy tank. Since I noticed this issue about a month ago, it's happened to me three more times that I've bounced the killing anti-tank grenade off the opposing tank. And in this particular example that you're watching, I bounced the killing anti-tank grenade off the opposing Panzer IV twice. And this is an issue because I felt like my chances of winning these games would be over 50% if I killed the enemy tank. And then after this, they didn't outright put me out, but I'd say my odds were under 20%. So this is a massive swing in terms of odds. And I think Snares fan to kill vehicles in this fashion are part of the reason why people think Snares are so buggy. You know, this is just uh, really, really frustrating. You know, the enemy tanks at zero health. Maybe you can't really notice that during the game, but once you've seen this video, oh boy, will you notice that you'll notice it every time it happens. Just like that. Zero health takes another 80 damage and fails to die. So I suppose philosophically, it kind of comes down to this. Like, do you think deflection damage should kill a vehicle or not? Do you think at zero health the vehicle should die? Or do you think a penetrating hit should be the one to kill it? Personally, I kind of feel that, you know, if the tank's already on death's door, maybe a shot doesn't have to get through the armor to just completely finish it off. Just like an explosion nearby might be close enough to finish it, but... You know, maybe that's part of your reasoning. You think that a penetrating hit should kill. Personally, I'm in the camp. Zero health should be death. Now, this doesn't affect all factions equally because not all snares in the game are actually equal. Most snares in the game work like this, same as the conscript one. 100 penetration all ranges, 80 deflection damage. But the Panzerfaust are different. They've actually got way more penetration. You can see here they go from 160 near to 140 far. But only 45 deflection damage, but this is the Green Deer Panzerfaust. Okay, W1 is different again. They've got 10 less penetration at all ranges, you know, and the regular 80 deflection damage. And this is important because most Allied medium tanks have 160 armor. So, you know, the Panzerfaust is almost always going to penetrate, whereas the Allied anti tank grenades, you know, with 100 penetration, is the OKW Panzer IV that we saw before with 234 armor. I mean, that's a less than 50% chance to penetrate. So this is a big disadvantage for allies compared to Axis. Unfortunately, the inconsistencies don't stop there. The OKW Panzerfaust and the USF anti-tank rifle nade that we saw earlier can continue to bounce off a zero health vehicle, whereas the Austria Panzerfaust, British Sapper heat grenade and conscript anti-tank grenade will all guarantee kill the vehicle with the next snare if it's at zero health. When it comes to other forms of deflection damage, such as from handheld anti-tank weapons like this Panzer Shrek, they will kill if the shot deflects. Whereas deflection damage from a vehicle such as this Bulldozer Sherman fails to kill. It's worth noting that very few vehicles have deflection damage, those that are pictured here, whereas all handheld anti-tank weapons do have deflection damage. So there you go. Now that you are aware of the issues regarding snares and deflection damage in Company of Heroes 2, how do you think that they should be handled? Let me know in the comments below. As always, a huge thank you goes out to my Patreon backers. Cheer to the cheer.